Hey there everybody, Miral Joe here. I recently had the opportunity to drive up to southern Utah and Bonnie, who lives up there in a little town called Hurricane, hosted me for a week while I painted clouds all over her ceilings. So that was a lot of fun and big thank you to Bonnie for making this video possible now and lending her ceilings as a canvas. So I'm going to show you just how I painted all of those different kinds of clouds. While I did paint them on a ceiling overhead, I'm going to be showing you how to paint them on a vertical surface. I'll show you how to make it appropriate to your circumstances. So, I hope that you enjoy the video and find it helpful. This is a fun kind of cloud that I like to paint. These alligator clouds that, that cover the sky and, and they look like alligator scales that are, you know, kind of split apart like dry dirt in the sun or something that's, that has that real systematic looking scaly pattern. I, I like those. I'll just paint these maybe a, a Y shape. For the most part, I like to do little Y shapes for the space in between. So let's do right there, maybe a, a smaller one here. And who knows, maybe it's fine to just let the blue bleed into the white. Maybe they'll just be real soft looking. I like using this as a background for other kinds of clouds. These maybe are the high altitude clouds and then I put something else in front of it so that I get some cool looking depth in my sky scene. In a whole scene, I'll, I'll make this taper out and get softer and softer. I might apply my sky color and then just do little dabs of the, the clouds, flip flop it. Now I'm painting the, the clouds over the blue rather than the negative space. You know, and I'll just try to make it taper off and disappear into the blue wherever I want the edges of it to be. I've made this like you're looking right up at it. But if you're putting this on your wall, you want it to be like you're looking out at it and, and it's like the ceiling. So I need to add perspective by flattening all of these lines. So I'm going to have a lot less of my vertical lines and a lot more of the horizontal lines uh, the further it gets toward what would be the horizon that might be somewhere at eye level on my wall. So everywhere I see this blue, I'm just blending it down. I'm not even thinking about the overall look of the sky right now. I'm just very systematically going from blue line to blue line, blending it down into the white. So a fun thing that I like to do with sky scenes is put clouds in front of clouds then you have more than just white on white and you can add layers where you have visible layers of clouds in front of each other and it's not just a bunch of white merged together. First thing I do with these is just build the shape by, by just these down strokes and, and I'm just using a long point of the brush. Sometimes I do it this way, okay, so if, if you just look at the long part of the brush it makes these, this round pattern. I do it that way a lot of the time, usually when I'm doing bigger clouds. And we'll just bring this right side way down. Rather than make it symmetrical, I'll just bring this one way down vertical like that. My shadow color, once again, is the sky color mixed with red. And it's just a little bit of red. So red and blue have a very darkening effect on each other. They cancel each other, so, so they become a darker color. And it makes a great shadow color for these daytime clouds. Watch how much better it looks when I flip-flop these and I put this one in front of this one and this one in front of this one because I'm looking up at these. Lowest in the picture, furthest away because just like this here, the highest in the picture is closest, lowest, further. So with these kind of clouds, I want to do that for the most part also. See so just these curved brush strokes. And once again, I'm I'm doing it with that longest point of this brush. And I'll bring those all the way to the very edge. All the way to the very edge of this cloud. And then with this technique, I'll even come back over it with white again. Right over that. Here, let's get some white. You know, right through the middle of this, I might just put some white dabs. Maybe make a few more wispies coming across there. The outer edge of a cloud that's over your head is going to be the brightest because 
the sun is above the cloud. Unless it's at sunset, that's different. But we're still going with daytime, daytime setting here. So I'm going to make an edge around this cloud. And for now, I'm just thinking about the edge. I'm not going to worry about the shadow that would be all over the middle of this. So what if I want to add some perspective to this and make it look like you can see just a little bit of the top. Maybe, maybe this is across the room. I'm going to bring that shadow down now. All right, and then I'll probably see a little bit of my shadow color on there. Let's add a little bit of that. And then I'll add some perspective to the bottom also. So now instead of just making a more round shape with light coming through, maybe now I'll actually make a bright area coming down like this. Remember those little triangle shapes I did at the bottom of those clouds? Like this little shape swooping down, blend it everywhere but on that point. So with each cloud, I'll be mixing three different colors. And so remember these three different kinds of colors. Your light color, which represents where the cloud is getting lit up the most by the light source, which would probably be the sun. The next color is the shadow color. And the shadow color is going to be very much influenced by the indirect light of the sky that it's set in. And the transitionary color is going to be the shadow and the light mixed together plus red. And I'll explain to you why. So to get started, I'm going to start making a light color for the first cloud. So let's say that this is maybe a sunrise or a sunset. So this is really just finding a color that I like that's somewhere between yellow and red. This result that I get is too green. And it's too green because there's blue in this, there's yellow in this, and blue and yellow paint make green. But blue and yellow light do not make green. They just make a gray or a white. It's colorless. And so I need to not have a greenish result in between my light and my shadow. So the way that I make sure I don't is I add red to that transitionary color. Okay, light color. And we're just gonna go around the edge of where this cloud is. I might have to do a couple coats if it doesn't cover the blue all the way. It needs to go to this color first so that in the transition, I don't have that ugly greenish color. It's not that it's an ugly color, it's just that it's out of place. And then I'll take this transitionary color and put it heavier right here. And this is different than the blue and white model that I did where I was brighter in the middle. It's opposite. I'm darker in the middle and then bright on this edge. Let's do something fun here. I'll make the color a little bit less realistic, something more, more bright and fairy tale looking, you know, something fun. Now something that's kind of cool with these kind of clouds that are on the opposite side of the sky as the sunset that would be way over there somewhere. Shining on the face of this is that the top of the cloud might be in the shadow of another cloud or it might be extending above the colored sunset. So it might go back to the blue and white color scheme. I'm going to try to start finishing off this cloud. I've got this kind of cool looking shape, but it's incomplete. It doesn't have the shadows. All right, then let's kind of enhance some of these bright spots, these undersides of this cloud. Here, right here. I come up in here and put sky color. When that sunlight gets gets filtered, the first color it turns to is yellow, so it always looks looks real bright and washed out when you put yellow right next to white. So you can see just how natural and luminous it looks all you know it looks like natural light when when you always stick with this pattern of the brightest white light first turning yellow before it turns more red. What I want you to remember, if nothing else, is 
that you can always break down the colors of a, of a cloud into those three kinds of colors. The shadow color, the light color, shadow color, light color, and the transitionary color that has more red than either of the colors. So listen, I want you to go to my site, learn.muraljoe.com, and download the full-length version of this How to Paint Clouds lesson. Now, if you can't afford the price that's posted there, I want you to fill in the price that you can afford. So if that's zero, then I understand. I want you to download it for free. I would hate for money to be the reason that you don't download my video. So anybody that's trying to learn, I want this to be a good resource for you. So I hope you enjoy it and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.